computer here. Okie doke. Okay. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, and I can hear you. So, welcome to the uh, Swag Beam Laser live stream here. Uh, today, I actually have a very special guest, somebody who I personally look up to as a poker player. Um, Ooh. Online, his name is uh, Liz Marie on Poker Stars. He's awesome, but apparently he goes by Josh. How's it going, that's buddy? That's me. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. No, we're chilling. We're on lockdown. We're on lockdown. Corona lockdown. Us too. I haven't shown up to work in like two weeks, and in my conference call, I heard probably at least three more. So, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good, uh, it's a good time to be playing online poker. Oh, for sure. Like, just the amount of um, sub-bar players online is, like, ridiculous. Like, I don't know mm. about you, but I had a crazy week last week where it was the best week of my career. This week, not so I mean, much. It's, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's obviously how it goes. No, the, these last few, last couple of weeks for me have been uh, very, very good. Much better than... Uh, <clears throat> better than your average week there's just so many people who don't know what's going on chucking their money away literally um, yeah a like, lot more trash talking in the chat as well i think um a lot of sort of people who are very excited to be playing they're sort of in and they like to type and they like the drama and all this stuff so yeah yeah, like, I find that, like, people are trying to really make a living, like, this month, like, more than usual, so they get more upset when they get bad beat, right? Because they feel entitled to all the fish that are out there. Do you think that's yeah, kind I of think, true? I think what more, more so is the case is that it's the fish doing it, because they, like, I don't know, they want to, I don't know what it is, they want to sit down, they want to talk, they want to engage, um... I feel like the regs and the reasonable players probably for the most part aren't saying as much, but there probably is some of that still. Nice. Um, sorry. Probably, what's that? Um, sorry, I'm, it, it's weird for me interviewing for the first time. Long story short, this guy called a five bet with fours and then a four came on the flop. It was great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had kings. Not um, me. No, not you. Uh, you're not. I, you're not pulling a me where I called with Ace Five suited on a four bet all in. So it's we're all good. Yeah, I have seen you do that once. Yeah, just once. It's okay. Um, <laughs> um, how have you been kind of um, reacting to all of the recreationals online? Like, have you adjusted your play schedule or anything like that? Uh, playing tons more. Um playing a little differently to how I've been playing in the past, a little, um, and uh, I should have fallen more than anything else, playing more than I usually would. Yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> have you been taking like risks at higher stakes than you normally would have? Like, Have you tried to accelerate your bankroll management a little bit more? Uh, I moved up to uh, the 25 no limit games, which I've not been playing for a little while, um, but I mean, I plan to do that anyway, it's just that with all the the free money being thrown around right now it was easier to do that yeah um but uh j just an issue of volume and moving up i'd say um the bankroll management thing was uh it was going to happen anyway it's just been much easier for it to happen now you know yeah like you're quote unquote i guess finding more money right when people are just dumping random stacks onto a what i think i saw you i saw that hand you showed me earlier didn't you have like two pair or something like that Ooh, which hand was this remind me uh the 30 dollar pot you showed me this morning where you flopped the set of kings oh yeah i i three bet with the kings uh c bet nine nine no not nine nine he had nine c bet ten ten four turn a king and just kind of went with it okay. um but uh, yeah, that kind of stuff obviously doesn't happen uh, so much during the uh, usual order of things, but uh, but uh, it's happening now, and um, <laughs> got to take advantage of it. Um, how long have you been playing on Poker Stars now? Uh, oh God, what is it now? March twenty twenty. Yeah. Um, four years, five years. Something like that. Um, my first deposit was on Triple Eight uh, in 2012. I can't remember when or why I moved to Stars actually, but uh, um, 
yeah i'd say i think it was like 2015 16 maybe Okay. Yeah, because um, I don't know if you've witnessed like 16NL during a non-boom, um, because you're relatively new to the stake from what I saw, because I've been grinding it for four or five months now. Yeah, I only moved there. I only really started playing again um, on... Uh, I only really started playing the cast game again in uh, January. I, was, I sort of had a long break. Yeah. Uh, and I started at 10 and just, uh, well, just one, I guess, quick enough to be able to move up. Um, so when did I start on 16? Uh, I can probably tell you looking at my sample. It, it's only for the last like, eight weeks or so. Yeah, because I, I know you're new. So one thing I'll let you know is that like um, during midnight our time or even nine o'clock, like in Eastern Standard Time, I'm used to like only... 8 to 11 tables running at 16 and now so right so seeing like all of these players online like it's it's really really weird because i'm i'm yeah. not used to it um so you kind of came up to the stake and then moved on from the stake at pretty much the perfect time um you're very very lucky is just like uh kind of wanted one and communicate and like now that you're at 25 and l are you noticing any kind of difference between the players? Uh, a lot of the regs are the same, to be honest. Yeah. Um, most of the most of the reasonable players kind of seem to flip between um, sixteen and twenty five. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few I've not seen, but at the end of the day, fish are fish, and there's still plenty of people just happy to whale their snacks in. Those obviously the ones I'm focusing on. Um, broadly. To answer your question, broadly, no. Um, I haven't really seen much difference. It's still kind of the same sort of standard um, in terms of the good players, but there aren't that many good players to start with anyway, so, yeah. Yeah, like, um, from what I've heard, like, the, um, the barrier from 16NL to, like, 25NL has really... It's kind of lowered, if that makes sense. Like, back in the day, like it used to be like this vaunted jump, but now it's become sort of gradient. Like, when you say that regs are jumping back and forth, I've, I've seen it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think the vast majority of the player pool is either the same, like literally the same players, or um, so similar in play style that it really makes no difference. Yeah. That's I I think the barrier now is more or less just a psychological one for players, end up being underrolled. Um, Probably yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't I don't I try not to look at the money while I play. I have it all in big blinds anyway. Me um, too. <laughs> and and that, that helps a little bit. Yeah, it definitely does. Like you don't see like um oh shit this is a nine dollar bluff I better be careful this is you know what I mean like it's, yeah of course. It's totally different. Um, how'd you start playing, like, uh, just in general? Um, so, sometime in 2011, I Googled... Um, uh, no, I put into YouTube Big Poker Pot. I don't know what I was expecting. And what came up was a video of a guy called P.S. Hines winning the main event in Las Vegas in uh, that year, 2011. And I, I watched it and for a while that's called cool. us a lot of money and whatever. And um, and then I kind of realized just by looking at the associated links that uh, it was ESPN at the time had like serialized the whole main event mm -hmm. and I could just watch it if I wanted to, episode by episode. Uh, so that's what I did. Um, all the time I was watching, all I really thought is, uh, I bet I could do that. <laughs> right. I, I don't really see like uh, why I couldn't be quite good at that. So anyway, I I played on uh, Zynga, Zynga on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Um, won a lot of chips and just thought like. I'm just gonna. If I can beat all these levels, I'm. Just, I'm gonna. I bet I could beat the, 
the smallest levels in the world. So I deposited on triple eight while I was living in Australia with some friends. This was in 2012. Um, and I deposited 20 bucks, 20 US dollars, or no, 20 Aussie dollars came out at like 22 US dollars. And, um, and then a year later, I had two grand on there, and just kind of went slow and built it from there. And then I lost loads of it and panic cashed out 700. But uh, nice. that's, uh, <laughs> that's a different story. Uh, that sounds like a little bit of a success story, but I'm assuming that there was a lot more than 700 before you cashed out. Uh, yeah, I ran it to two grand um, and uh, 2,000 and then lost a lot and i uh, was like oh god i lost it can't do it anymore i was young and stupid i didn't really understand what was going on um but uh yeah so that's kind of how it started for me playing cash games and watching it on uh, youtube well um i i think i can pretty confidently say that that kind of start is probably better than like 95 percent of poker players first starts where their first deposits usually get lost or anything like that the fact that you were able to kind of take out i guess 700 divided by 20 is 37 times what you invested yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean that is fair to say i never i've never bust a roll you know yeah i've never like online or um in real like live play i've never had to reload a roll yeah um, which i think is quite i don't think many people can say that but you know i think i've probably been quite lucky along the way in fact i know i have but you know it's a nice thing to say, isn't it? No, it's a great thing to say. I can't say that. It, it took me a couple deposits for sure. <laughs> well, you got there in the end. Uh, barely. I, I don't even know. Um, so you were telling me a little bit about your uh, mentor, Tom. Uh, just kind of... Oh, yeah. It's Tom um, Beans. Yeah, Tom Beans. Like, um, how did you guys kind of meet, just for the viewers? Like, how'd you find your mentor? Uh... Okay, so I got, got to go back a little way. Basically, this was before I played a single hand of poker. I went to a theme park with a friend who actually he now lives in Canada. His name is Nigel, and uh, he was a skier. He was a skiing enthusiast. The chips and... are very loud. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, <laughs> no, that's okay. Stop filming. Sorry, um, I was going to ignore it, but <laughs> <laughs> it would it'd be much louder if I did it on the desk at home. Fair enough. Yes. Not bad. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I went out. This is, yeah, 2009. went out to a theme park with a friend, Thorpe Park in England. And uh, my friend Nigel bought his friend Leo. And um, we, yeah, we got on all right. It was, it was all good. And I added him on Facebook afterwards. Um, uh, his name is Leo Worthington. Um, now, couple of years down the line i sort of just got rid deleted him in like a clear out because we haven't really spoken you know i just knew him from that one thing um then i got into poker separately and then way back like way much later i was in some facebook ham discussions mm -hmm. uh, groups and i saw this name pop up leo and i was like i'm sure i know that guy so i click clicked his profile and sure enough it was him one mutual friend nigel um and i was just like oh I, I do know that guy and he was one of the few people on these forums who were making sense and giving good feedback and i just kind of respected his opinion so i messaged him like hello do you remember me <laughs> um yeah and he, he remembered me and i re-added him and started sharing hands with him and so we kind of got sort of friendly and um and then a couple of years down the line, so this was 2017, he told me he was setting up a stable. Um, now, a stable is where, uh, for anyone who was not sure, one person or multiple people, in this case it was three, it was, it was Leo, a guy called Tom Deans, and a guy called John Jacobs, whereby they were, they were giving people money um, to play, and we all had to, lock, we were all on a big Skype group together. And um, they were coaching us in a big group, in private groups. They were doing uh, live coaching. They were taking our, our samples. Um, we were playing 
uh, $2.50, 180-man sit-and-goes, and $3.50 rebuy sit-and-goes, 180-man. And just every day, they were all talking in there, super active. Uh, I was friends with, still am friends with a guy called Bobby, who streams all the time. Um, R Poker J, I think he's Twitches. And uh, he, like, he final table the Sunday Million or something while we were all part of it. So that was, huh. that was fun. Um, and anyway, like I said, one of the founders was a guy called Tom Deans. Uh, and we were doing a review once and he, he said something to me along the lines of me being good with more chips. Uh, like you seem to know how to play the deep stacks quite well. And I said, well, yeah, I mean, like, I mostly play cash anyway. I'm not very good at these type of things. And he sort of probed a little bit. He was like, where have you played cash? I told him I played live. Um, I told him I, I played some like 25 no limit, a uh, little bit of 50 no limit on Sky Poker. And he sort of got interested and was like, well, hang on, if you've been doing all that, why are you in this stable? Um, you know, with us bankrolling you for like micro sitting goes. Uh, so I told him just to get a bit better, really. And he he basically, eventually, unstable, stable, fell apart. The guys all fell out with each other and stuff. But we kept talking. Mm -hmm. And so it was me and Tom talking and this other lad, Bobby. And it turned out that Tom had taken Bobby to LA and bankrolled him to play there. And they were going back. And he basically invited me. He was basically like, look, I, I think... I think you're good enough, which is very kind and very flattering. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen you play cash. Um, you've posted uh, live hands to me. Uh, I think you adapt to that game really well. Come to America um, and play all summer. And uh, so I said yes. And uh, from about that point, he was sort of a personal private coach um, because yeah, obviously it was in his interest for me to get as good as possible. And, uh, yeah, we went out there together and uh, played all summer. Sorry, I do a lot of nodding. That's something I've got to, like, get better at. Is like a, <laughs> You're like, just nodding along to me. Yeah, no, which is good because it's like, I want you to keep talking. That's the whole point. Um, yeah. And then, like, I'm, I'm, like, nodding and it's like, oh, wait, shit. Like... <laughs> he can't see that. Yeah, no. Um... How long so, ago was yeah, that? That's, uh, that was in that all happened in 2017, um, and we went to LA in 2018, all summer. He left a bit early, but uh, but I was there for the long haul. Okay, and um, how important do you think that um, just having that kind of mentor was towards like finding your game? Like, did you find you improved a lot throughout that process? Yeah, I did improve a lot. It's also it was good for me to have somebody to be accountable to. Um, you know, I had to uh, report back to him. I had to um, discuss hands with him if I messed things up. Obviously, he was there to, you, you know, he was like my boss, which isn't really why I got into poker. But for a short while, it was good. It was good for me. And do you find like a lot of that advice is still used to this day? Uh, I'd say so, yeah. I mean, knowledge doesn't really go away, does it? Um, he may be better at the game, and uh, I, I remain better. I still talk to him plenty, um, and we're still gonna, hoping to go back to LA at some point. He was actually in LA when all this coronavirus kicked off and oh. uh, had to come back early. Yeah. No, it's, it's it's crazy, man. Like, it's just upended, like, so many lives. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Yeah, it's bizarre. It's really weird. I know, I, like, I always, like, one fear that I have is, like, what's stopping this from happening next year, too? Like, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, or it, just getting gradually worse. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I literally have no idea. Um, sorry, what I've been double-checking is making sure that the stream's actually running. Like, um, basically, it looks like it's probably running um it's just my laptop is a complete piece of shit to be completely honest so it might not be loading on a really really crappy laptop it says it's still live so i'm just gonna go with that um <laughs> trust the process. you've got 78 viewers no that's um combined oh, lifetime views. views yes okay i was like i was like holy shit like that would be amazing <laughs> yeah that was that was a bit of a i don't know made me jump a little bit <laughs> 
but uh, yeah, it's combined. Yeah. Views, not the viewers. I know. I, if if that was a real number, I'd shit my pants. And like, they're they would be watching me do nothing on cash game because nothing's happened except kings versus fours. <laughs> Uh, I've actually won. If I'd been broadcasting my screen, we would have had a good time. So I've uh, cleaned up in the last half hour. Well, next time we'll do yours then. <laughs> 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 Fuck no, it's um, I, I don't even. So it's weird because I'm not running the um, the HUD, so I have no idea if I'm up or not. <laughs> like, if that kind of makes sense, like yeah, of course. Like, I I know I'm down, but I don't know by how much. So I have no idea how I'm even going to discover that later. Maybe I can get like a hand history emailed or something. Yeah, they can email it too. Yeah, whatever. I'm not worried about that. Um, basically, with the stream, I've been trying to donate some of the profits, but there hasn't been a lot of profits on the stream. But we don't. Whatever. But that's just that's a whole separate can of worms. Um, yeah. <laughs> we don't worry about short term results in poker. Try our best. Yeah, that's that's. I'm glad that you're saying that because I'm sure anybody who at least kind of like, because I see a lot of the same names kind of lurking the chat all the time, kind of lurking and not really doing anything. Um, what do you find is like important advice to like a modern poker player, like somebody who's starting up in 2019, 2020? Uh, good question. Um, patience is the thing you need above everything. Um, if you haven't got patience, if you, I've spoken to people who have asked me to teach them a little bit or, oh, poker, how does that work? All this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, the very first thing before anything else is person because you need patience. Um, that's in the short term, that's in the long term, um, everything, everything is just your time will come if you're good enough. And if it ain't your time right now, um, You've got to have the emotional intelligence and the temperament to just shrug and be like, okay, well, I'm losing. I've been losing for a while. Um, you need the, like I said, you need the patience, you need the emotional intelligence not to get frustrated or angry. Like, obviously, it's natural to get down about these things, but mm -hmm. um, frustration is it's just not really a positive thing. Having a network around you helps because. Um, <laughs> the beauty of poker is everyone thinks they're good at it. Um, and you need to be able to show people, show friends who you trust. Um, big, big spots you've been in, hands you think you played well, and just make sure that you really are doing those things and you're not actually just a poor poker player because poor poker players just don't, they don't win in the long term. Um, if you're bad at the game, you will never win. Uh, over any reasonable circle. Um, so, yeah, I would say to try and sum that up neatly, I would say patience, some emotional intelligence, and a network of people around you sort of uh, uh, to, to talk about the game with, really. Um, what I find interesting about that statement, just in general, is I threw you a really, really general question about like what's important as a poker player, and um, it wasn't play less hands, it wasn't play tight aggressive. Like the first word out of your mouth was uh, patience, and it, yeah, I mean, if, if people want to talk strategy, it's, it's it's a whole different conversation to me. I don't know that might maybe wrong, maybe right. I don't know, but it's not <clears throat> the most important things are not about playing the game better they're about i don't know being a being a better person maybe being you know it's a temperament issue i think yeah i i think i've noticed that as well like um i have a bunch of um labels that i have i use about eight of them and um one of them is like mental game fish to be completely um, honest yeah uh, it literally like um if i know that somebody is going to tilt if they get bad beat or if i yeah. just kind of probe them those are the kind of people i look for those players are great the ones that erupt after they lose like either they get cornered or they get sucked out on and then they're filling up the chat full of rage and stuff like yeah those players salty yeah. players they're, they're never gonna go very far no, exactly. Like, one of the most interesting quotes I've ever read was by Mike Tyson. Like, he's, um, 
he's a basket case. Like, dude, I don't know what he's like now. Hopefully, he's kind of mellowed out with age a little bit. I think he's a vegan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is he not? Is he? He's not the one who had like, uh, not Alzheimer's. He's not the one who had like brain damage. Is it? Yeah, he was the one that bit a guy's ear off and like pushed and all the. Yeah, down the I remember. I remember that stuff all back in the day. Um, but I can't remember. I'm sure there's so. Uh, I'm not really a boxing person. I don't know too much about it. I'm sure there was someone who was kind of famous for losing some motor functions or whatever. But I may be misremembering. No, that's okay. Like the the whole point was he said everybody has a game plan until you get punched in the face. Yeah, like, yeah, that is a good one. I've heard that one. Yeah. yeah, and it was just kind of like um, people online, like um, they they really really prepare with like gto and everything like that and like just trying to learn everything perfectly but i feel like um at least from what i've read that all goes away unless you've got it memorized and when you're upset all that you're left with is just kind of like your basic tools the flight or fight response right so yeah there was a name for them i can't remember what esfandiari and um uh phil lack his name is unabomber yeah. Um, who, who I actually played with a while ago. He was good. He was, he was cool. Um, they they had a name for these players. I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember what they called them, but it was something to do with. Um, it was a name for a bunch of players who would be good if they could play as well as they played at their best all the time, um, but were susceptible to frustration, tilt, and wailing it off. Um, I have to try and find the name because uh, otherwise uh, the whole line of a bit redundant. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm also um, pulling out my phone right now. Um, yeah, because that's interesting. Because like what I basically call it is, um, like I said, I literally call them mental game fish right now. Um, yeah, well, that, that's very much a very much a apt term. Uh, um, basically, I know there's something called jungleman tilt as well. Um where basically like um he'll emotionally lash out at, mm. at the tables but then it doesn't affect his game if that kind of makes sense like um but they call it jungleman tilt because they used to think it would um but basically like with him like even if he's like mad like he's just come to this like zen conclusion where it doesn't matter how mad i am like the truth is the truth you know what i mean yeah exactly yeah so if you get three bet by a knit uh, under the gun plus two and you've got i don't know like um queen jack suited and you got cooler sure you can play it but chances are he's he's at least ahead and do you want to put your tournament stack on the line with that kind of thing right like that's basically what he's talking about yeah um, yeah i mean tournaments obviously a different beast and i've never i don't claim to be very good at tournaments but me uh... <laughs> But, uh, yeah. Um, so, um, what keeps you busy now? Oh, while wow. there's not a lot to do other than poker, do you really turn to anything else at the moment? Uh, what was the question? Sorry, what keeps me what now? What keeps you busy other than the poker right now? Because I'm sure 13 hours a day on poker isn't very sustainable. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, before lockdown, I went out and got the my lovely cross trainer, elliptical. Um, so I'm trying to shave off a little bit of my... I, I was skinny before LA, and then I had pancakes for breakfast every day for three months and uh, never never quite shifted the results of that. Um, so working out on that, uh, waiting for the Final Fantasy VII remake, uh, the scrolls online, uh, hanging out with my cats. Um, How many cats you know, do you have again? I have four here where I live with my missus, my wife, and her mum, and then my parents' place, we have three. That's amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, we're looking at opening Birmingham's first independent cat cafe. That was uh, what we were doing uh, alongside work before all this lockdown nonsense. So hopefully, uh, yeah, cats will be a big part of uh, my life going forward. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <sighs> Um, I, I guess you're kind of glad though this happened now as opposed to um, oh, God, when everything yeah, yeah. yeah. That would have been awful. yeah 
because a lot of like new business owners have just kind of been like are you fucking kidding me like you know what i mean like yeah no if, if if we had opened and then all the shutdown stuff had become a thing like we would have been utterly snooked that would have been it we would have been shutting down i know i'm I, i'm glad that uh at least you guys had some good fortune because like um i don't know a lot of people are very unlucky right now yeah that's something the silver lining really um when you open the cafe um do you plan on taking a step back from poker a little bit more again um what are your plans uh yeah i mean there won't be any there won't be any um there won't be any sufficient time i anticipate we're gonna be there like uh well we will be there seven days a week um and probably open to the public seven days a week so um that there simply won't be the time you know i've got to leave my other job for this so um uh, i guess maybe when when we sort of make, get some employees maybe and get running without us needing to be in there 24 7 um i'll be able to go back to it a little bit and get some friends over and, <laughs> and play uh play amongst the cats in the evenings after closing time or something yeah so, um but yeah it largely it will have to be the end no my friends ask quite frequently like um when i'm gonna organize a game and it's just kind of like hey, you guys don't want to play with me unless i'm trashed like you know what i mean like it's i do you find that like um it doesn't feel like it's kind of like a magical game as it used to for you like does that kind of make sense like is poker kind of um well, I mean, I used to sparring out of bed to go play. Um, I used to get super excited every session, drive all around the country to go play live. Uh, Birmingham, Nottingham, London all have good active poker scenes. Um, but uh, obviously, you do something so, so much. Um, it can become, you know, I, I stopped playing full time because I got bored. Mm -hmm. I was bored. Um, and it was a bit depressing um, and I wanted to go and do something that made more of a difference with my time mm -hmm. um, but you know I still I still like the game I come back to it after uh, after a long break you know um, so there's obviously something in me that still is interested um, but yeah I mean everything gets a bit less interesting obviously as time goes on but you know, when I wasn't interested, I just didn't play. Um, mm -hmm. I just gave myself the time off. And and when the, the fire or whatever it was came back, I went back. Yeah. Um, I guess, um, I don't know, like, do you find... I, I think you and I have had the conversation, but, like, you think that live games are a lot fishier like there's a lot more recreational players especially you know what i mean the lower limits yeah they're all insanely soft they play like they play like two no limit on poker stars i'd say yeah. um how would i word it do you think um it would be more profitable to be playing like live stakes at the lower limits or being kind of a grinder like playing the i don't know even lower micros or something like that online like even uh, now i don't know i think i think the optimal way to do it is to do both if you've got that time um when i was playing hello you still hear me oh i can now yeah cool so when i was playing full time i was really using online as a training ground and then going out uh, to just kind of plug leaks and make sure I was comfortable in every possible scenario. And then I'd get in my car and even just go out and print the actual money. Mm -hmm. um, there's more money to be made in life, I'd say. Um, but it won't make you a better poker player. So it kind of depends what your your goals are, I'd say. Like if you're to a 1-1 one, one game or a 1-2 game or maybe a uh, 5-5 five, five if you're in the States. Um, grind out a win rate, destroy some fish, go home um, and just have 
you know, uh, like a little profitable hobby, then that's that's fine and that will work. Um, but to get better and to eventually maybe move up, I'd, I'd say using online to sort of trade um, and just become force the experience down your throat is mm. the best way to go. But it, yeah, it comes back to your goals to what you really want to get out of the game. I think. No, that makes sense. Like, um, a lot of the conversations that I have with people, like, when I'm talking about poker is, like, um, even at the micro stakes, like, 16 or 25 and now, um, in different countries, that's, like, a living wage. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Like, if you... If you start a, a new fresh bankroll and you start to no limit... Now, of course... 90% of it is a circus and no one knows what's going on. It's great. Yeah. But there are some good players down there that there really are. Um, thinking about it, possibly not these days as much because you can only play four tables now. Yeah. But like back in the day, like three or four years ago, you'd find like solid fundamental players and they were playing like 16 tables. Yeah. And, and they were good. Uh, you know, you just tagged them quite quickly and just didn't really play with them. But every now and then, uh, you could find a nice spot to bluff them because you knew how face how like ABC they were playing. But uh, yeah, there are some good players down there. It's, it's strange, and that's because of the the wage difference, I'd say. Yeah, like oh, what I found interesting was um, only playing four tables has actually been really really good for my game. Um, mm. Like I. I it's so weird because a lot of those old grinders that I used to see, especially at five and L like, um, I don't see them anymore. You know what I mean? And like, I don't know if they went out and got like different jobs after. Or, yeah. Like... Yeah. I agree. It's hard to know where some of these people go. Yeah. Because like, I, I think the reasoning behind it was they were trying to get rid of like bots playing or they just wanted to make it more fair for like recreational people. Um, but like, I didn't really notice uh, what are the words I'm looking for here? Like a table drop off. You know what I mean? Like not as yeah. significant as you'd think. And I think it was because the same person was sitting down literally at 12 or 15 tables. Right. Yeah. I think that probably is the case. Yeah. But no, it was, I, I personally welcomed the change. Um, I know I'm beating an old horse at this point, but do you think cash outs being really good for action at this point? Like the all in cash outs? Uh, I think, I think, uh, bad players use cash out quite a bit. Um, uh, I think it probably allows them to, uh, chuck their big blinds in a bit happier. It, sorry, a bit, a bit more happily because they know they can always pull some of it out. Um, so I'd say yes, probably. Yeah. Um, have you made any like adjustments to your game since the all in cash out came like did you find that you needed to bluff less in certain spots did you find that you needed to be value betting more uh no i haven't really thought too much about it i've just noticed um i've just noticed it mostly seems to be the the, the, the spots using it um maybe maybe actually actively uh planning around it might be something i could not a bad idea yeah no it's it's something that i thought about i don't know like um just because some people i don't know like i found that people who used to never raise flops or turns before um are now all of a sudden doing it with nut flush draws because oh my god 50 percent equity and maybe i get a fold you know what i mean like it's cool. yeah. yeah like i don't know like just I, I guess i'll give away one of my biggest secrets here I, i've told you this already um but i I try to wait until the turn to get it all in now, unless I have the stone cold nuts, um, just because their equity gets cut in half, right? Like, um, you know, when you only have one card to go, that nut flush draw suddenly drops to 30% if you have an over card. Like, it's just, I don't know, it, it scares people a little bit more. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I should ask you, I guess. Um, <laughs> I'm really not that interested. No, no, it's, trust me, you're interesting, man. Like, it's, like, you've told me so much. Like, I've been writing it all down, to be completely honest, just, like, looking at it and everything like that. 
Um, do you think that um, 2020, like, you won't believe it because I barely do. It's April in two days, which fucking blows my mind. Yeah, that's bad. I know. Like, it, it feels like this has been the longest year of my life and, like, it's April. But, like, <laughs> it's so fucked. Like, do you think the poker community is going to look back at this and kind of go, like, oh, this was, like, another boom? You know what I mean? Like, this was another renaissance, so to speak? Well, <clears throat> I certainly am. Uh, um, I mean, th there's literally legislation um, being debated in the UK about the restriction of gambling uh, companies and advertising during the uh, sort of... Uh, apex of uh, all this corona stuff probably yeah um yeah because like i was even reading like um interviews with dana negrano he goes like uh well what else are people gonna do while he's in his like uh vegas mansion you know what i mean yeah it's a lovely cold or whatever yeah like i don't know man like i i hope like in canada things are really really good like the only thing we don't really have is casinos and like this isn't really going to help that um obviously because you can't go out but yeah i don't know like hopefully as bad as this was like people can kind of remember this as a, a time where a lot of people who probably wouldn't have gotten into the game you know decided holy shit let's give it a try uh, yeah i mean we we, we could see um I suppose we could see like an increase of player pool that will, uh, you know, that will hold steady to some point after it's all over. You know, some of them will, some of these people will go away, um, and because you know they've got to go back to work or whatever, some of them will uh, get stacked multiple times, get fed up, and move on. But some of them, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, will uh, you know hang around and, and play a reasonably competent game of poker and maybe the numbers will be uh, boosted yeah, and who knows maybe somebody will read like one guide online that says uh only play 15 percent of your hands and then we have a couple of bad regs you never know mm, um, <laughs> yeah yeah telling you all kinds of spouting abuse when uh you don't understand how you've ended up beating them with your uh five seven suited when they had uh kings right exactly like i i think it'll open up the door even just to like because like sometimes when i watch people play like it's gotten to the point where I, I don't know if you feel the same like you can almost tell what resource they learned from just by kind of looking at their stat line and going like okay this is probably what he's thinking you know what i mean yeah i mean that profiling is a massive part of, of the game you know working out the profile of who you're playing against and uh uh, and being able to profile people um, always kind of comes with that that kind of territory of is this person actually thinking about the game? What kind of level they're thinking on? Mm -hmm. Do they even understand what's going on? Um, how much does this person want to gamble? Have they got the bankrolls from playing where they are? All mm -hmm. that stuff. No, what I've found is I do need to work on my general game because. Um... I, I, I told you this, and I'll say it to the uh, stream. My computer is pushed to its limit right now. So um, I'm not running my HUD. And oh my god, I'm playing like shit. I don't know if I'm playing bad, but I'm definitely running bad. Like, it's a weird experience because, like, I have to sit down and, like, actually think about the situation a little bit more. Um, yeah, I mean, playing without a HUD can be healthy. Yeah. Um, for sure. Not to the bankroll, apparently, but, like, for the mind, <laughs> absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> it's, it's, it's an exercise, isn't it? Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't find too much of an issue with it. Like, um, I, I told you about GG a little bit. Um, yeah. There's like no HUDs like at all. It's weird. Um, it took me a while to get used to it. Yeah. So, what hey guys, Brandon from the Get Stalk Podcast and the Swag Beam Laser Stream here. For some reason, the last five minutes of the clip have been lost to the sands of time. And my reasoning behind that is there was a lot of lag going on with the stream. Uh, me trying to multi-table and conduct an interview and run the stream was just a little too much for my little PC to handle here. But um, thankfully, 
I was able to keep most of the important information that Josh was able to provide throughout the interview. So I'm able to upload it pretty much uncut. And I'm going to be looking to get some highlights out of it eventually. It's just at this current juncture, it's really not possible, which sucks. Um, the ending mainly was me talking about how, in my opinion, HUDs might be on the way out. And Josh found that interesting. He was like, okay, um, so do you think that PokerStars is going to be pandering? Not pandering was his word, but that's going to be the word catering um, to a more recreational gambler. And my opinion was yes. So I basically just went through that. The important thing for this kind of post-edit recording here is talking about two different ways where you can uh, support Josh. You can either A, go to his Instagram, which is PearlJosh91, or you can go to his stream, which is just PearlJosh. He uploads higher stakes than I do. He records 10 cent, 25 cent, and he probably has a computer that can handle streaming a lot better than mine, evidently. So check him out. I am also leaving this kind of little bit of uh, narration to say that if you ever need any help about poker or anything like that, leave a comment in the video, send me a message, uh, subscribe, uh, follow me on Instagram, which is uh, Get Stroke Podcast, and I would be more than happy to answer any questions. I wish that um, him plugging his information himself would still be there, but again, it's been lost. Um, I would love to call Josh a friend of the show, and hopefully he'll be back on again at some point where it'll be a little less formal. It can be us kind of like dicking around, like maybe starting a home game or something like that. And uh, if we get a following, then maybe we can open one up. Uh, one of the interesting ideas that he talked about, just kind of going through this again one more time, um, was even him talking about like a poker stable. Like, um, offering based, not him necessarily, but these people offering up free advice to players. And I thought that was really interesting, but unfortunately, um, I, I don't have the following for that kind of thing yet. But it's something that I would definitely consider in the future. Uh, one last thing I want to plug before you go is this video is coming up March 31st. If you want an extra 8% in rake back... All you have to do is follow my link to GG Poker in the description. Until April 3rd, I am offering an additional 8% rate right back in any action that you do if you play on GG Poker. Super, super easy. Um, that 8% will go for two months. And after the two months, you still get your double deposit bonus, which is also offered with my promotion code if you follow it. Um, it's at Swagbeam. Not at, it's just Swagbeam, I apologize. Um, and I think that's all I really needed to say. So thank you again to Josh for showing up for the interview. He definitely didn't have to. I uh, took an hour of his time in the late, late, late times of the UK. I think it was around 10 or 11 for him, I'd have to confirm. But anyways, thank you all for watching this while kind of bearing with me absolutely blowing off four stacks while I was recording. I learned a thing or two but I'm going to call it. And thank you again for watching, and I will see you all soon. Or I guess you'll see me. Bye.